It's finally time I finish this netherite beacon. To do that, I will create a massive world eater that uncovers ancient debris. Also remember how I completely broke my world getting this armor? Well, I managed to lose one of the pieces. What a disaster. And the village gets a massive upgrade. I won't be allowing any raiders to get into this one. Also guys, thanks so much for supporting my channel. If you're new, it would be awesome if you could subscribe. I feel like they made diamonds way more common in 1.18. So I'm gonna grab a fortune three pickaxe and go in search of some brand new chunks. And now I'm gonna put a timer on screen and see just how many diamonds I can find in just 30 minutes. Already found a massive cave. Can't believe I forgot to turn off my bob switch. Well, let's begin mining diamonds. Remember guys, diamond armor and tools are for peasants, but the, the diamonds themselves aren't that bad. There's two more right here and loads in this big cave. This challenge is just way too easy. No matter how easy it is to find diamonds now, this update has without a doubt made caving 10 times more enjoyable. And that is 19 diamond ores I've found so far. Over a diamond per minute so far. Ah yes, the classic cave chickens are back. This cave is absolutely massive with loads of diamonds around it. I'm not far off 30 minutes and already I've got 41 ores. Yeah, they've definitely made finding diamonds way easier in this update. And that is 30 minutes complete. We got 43 diamond ore. And just to prove a point, I'm going to mine them up with fortune, even though I kind of want to keep the ores. This is going to be close to 100 diamonds in total. Let's have a see. 104 diamonds in 30 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> this is way, way too OP. But this video isn't really about finding diamonds. It's all about getting thousands of pieces of ancient debris. And the best way for me to get ancient debris is going to require me to have a lot of slime. But this farm right here, it, it's okay, but it's it's nowhere near going to be fast enough. Instead, I'm going to build a super powerful portal farm inside of a swamp biome. That way I don't have to spawn proof an entire area or worry about building it where there's slime chunks. This design is by Ian X04 and it is a very cool concept indeed. And now a massive area has successfully been flattened. Now to go and gather the materials. You'll notice I'm only coming back with obsidian, stone, cobblestone, and iron blocks. And that's because I've had a change of heart. Building this farm in a swamp will mean it'll only work at night, which is why I think it makes sense to go to a slime junk. Because this area is underwater, mobs generally speaking won't be able to spawn. And I just need to box in this slime junk. Now to grab some sponge and drain it. Looking very good indeed. Now to remove all the gravel. Next I'll build a beacon and mine everything super super fast. Guys, I hear a thunderstorm. And you know what that means? I can go into this shulker box and grab this channeling... Tr no, that's the wrong one. This is the channeling trident. And if I launch it at this lightning rod, Odd. Okay, that, that didn't work. I think it needs to be a bit further away. Let's take two. There we go. Surge protector advancement achieved. And there was only one casualty along the way. And that is the entire room well and truly dug out. So let's now break this beacon. Next, I'll build some giant portals. Now, did I didn't make this too big. <laughs> Yes, I did. 23 blocks is the maximum height it can be. There we go, that's much better. Now to build three more. And they are all now done. And thanks to mob spawning changing in 1.18, these portals make it so that no other mobs can spawn. And now to add loads of platforms for the slimes to spawn on. And that is all of the platforms complete. Now to add some torches up here. And now to build all the way up here and create the AFK platform. And apparently I've got no glass and I need a load. And whilst I'm home, I can also repair my pickaxe. Need a few other items, I've got them all now. So let's do more building. And here is the area where the slimes will fall in through the portal. I can come up here as well and access this portal if I need to. And before I properly link this one up, I want to break this tower. Next, I'll build a trench that will get rid of the pigment. And at least I know the farm's working from all these slimes. And then there needs to be trapdoors along here. And the same on this side. And then I'll add iron golems in little slots in the walls. Never mind, pigment can't see through portals, so I'll just leave you there and leave this. More importantly, let's link this portal. And this is exactly where the portal will need to be. So slimes will come through this portal and any of the big slimes slimes will get caught in this lava and then turn to small slimes that can go back through the portal or the small slimes can just kind of go through so that's how that works if i go up here it should take me up to sky limit as you can see we're all the way up here if i go all the way down going through one of these portals will also connect me up here you can see the slimes already coming through and into the place where i can take them out and because i'm using looting on this slime farm it makes the rates much much better as you can see we've got loads coming through all i need is 40,000 of these slime balls which with this it shouldn't take too long and after a few days of chilling here i have so many slime balls. Look at that. That's loads and loads. I will still need much more slime blocks than this in total, but it's, it's a great step in the right direction. And now we can spend a bit of time working on my next project, which is really just a continuation of getting things ready for my world eater. So I'm going to choose an area around here to build the world eater because I also want to make a perimeter over a fortress. That will allow me to make the most powerful farms in the fortress that I possibly can. And now with world eaters, they take a lot of preparation. In the normal world, you can just plunk them down in the sky and set them off and that's fine. But here in the nether, we've, we've got to chisel out a massive area. So I guess I better start digging. So this is as far as I'm going to go in this direction. Now I'm chiseling out a border that will let me know everywhere that needs to be mined out. Now that I've built a border all the way around, I'm starting to realise how ridiculously big this task is. 
Before I go any further, let's repair this pickaxe. And what better place to repair it than the trusty slime farm? I managed to get so much slime this time. Look at this. Uh, it's too chestful. And all of that is another step closer to where I need to be. Now it's back to mining netherrack. Well, both of my pickaxes are so close to being broken. And I've got so much netherrack. Now to repair the pickaxes. Now they're fixed. Let's get back to mining. Although to be honest, I don't think doing all this mining is really the best way. Instead, I'll mine up loads of sand and loads of gunpowder to craft lots and lots of TNT. Then I can place it all down and blast this place open. Yeah, something tells me this is a little bit faster than mining it by hand. And already this is finding me ancient debris, this little thing. But I've got much bigger plans than that. And unfortunately, that is the last of my TNT. So it looks like it's back to mining manually. Two more pickaxes nearly broke and I've chiseled out so, so much more. And interestingly, there is a bastion under this massive area that I'm digging. A bastion I don't think I've actually looted. So you never know. Well, there's a bit of uh, netherite scrap, which is nice. Everything else, I'm not too bothered about. This place is actually going to be completely destroyed by the world eater. So you guys should enjoy living there whilst you can. And another item that I'm going to need for this world eater are dead coral fans. And so that means I need to try and find a coral reef. Found a random village on the way. Although I kind of don't know what a village could offer me that I don't already have. That could be a cool project though, to get one of every type of villager. Because of course, each villager in each biome looks slightly different. So that is definitely an idea for the future. It's amazing what you find when you're just flying over random places. Only the OGs will remember what I used that portal for. And we found a slightly warmer ocean, which is a good sign. And of course, I'm going to check every route in portal I find. You never know when you might find a notch apple. You know what? Glistering melons are kind of useful, ain't they, carrots? But more importantly, where are the coral reefs? I actually have the coordinates of a coral reef written down, so I, I might as well just go there. Here we go. <laughs> it never fails to uh, to work. Kind of forgot what I came for now, right? I think I came for these, so I can silk touch them, which I guess is just all I need to do. I'm not sure if the colour actually matters, but I'm going to be grabbing these blue tube coral ones. And it'd be better for me inventory management if they're all the same. Guys, even though I am technically destroying the ocean, I'm still part of Team C's and you should uh, you should definitely go and support them too. I've got 44, which is the total amount that I need, but I'd like to collect 50 for good measure. In fact, 57 for even better measure. Right, I'm getting out of here before I uh, steal every bit of coral in the ocean. I'll safely put these coral fans in my under chest and then I'll get back to clearing out this massive area for the world eater. So I spent a lot of of time mining. And in the end, I came to the conclusion that it's so slow and that TNT is really the only way to go. But the new 1.18 update has really lowered the rates of my creeper farm. So I'll craft all of the TNT that I can, and I've got a stack and a half spare in here. Next, I'll place down loads of this TNT, and then I'll blast it all up. Yeah, look at this. This is this is 10 times faster than doing any mining. So let's get loads more of it down. Yeah, look at that. It's absolute craziness over there. So much of it is getting blown up. And I can remove all of the lava that it leaves behind. And already I'm finding extra ancient debris as well. Now the last of my TNT placed. Now I've got to come up with a better solution for my gunpowder farm. So the first issue is that mobs now need light level zero to spawn, which means that no creepers can spawn on this level and they can only spawn on certain parts of the level above. And that's all thanks to the light from these portals. So the first thing that I want to do to fix this is to grab a load of stone and to also mine up lots of ice. Then that can be turned into packed ice and now to move these nether portals. I realise that mining up all the obsidian is going to be the most annoying thing of the day. I haven't used the mechanism here since I changed it to portals so all of that can go. So this is the chute that they will fall into. So hopefully light in this portal will not project any light onto this level. Let's place all of this along here. Well, that was a, uh, a slight mistake, wasn't it? I'm not going to make it look too nice because I am at some point going to make a way better creeper farm. Nice to repair that. So now it's back to mining obsidian. And that is the water system finished. They'll all get pushed down here. Final thing is to craft a load of buttons and spawn proof everything. Although after my little creeper disaster, I'm a bit short on items to spawn proof. Looks like more stone is required. And whilst I am pleased with the progress I've made on this farm, I was going to see if I could add more layers. But rather than using cats, I'd use water. But it's, it's just going to be too much effort. Like it's just not the right shape and everything. So I'm going <laughs> to put all these slabs back now. And I'm also going to expand this platform a bit, see if it affects the pack spawning. I'm not sure if 1.18 changed anything like that though. Now let's AFK up here a bit more and the rates will be slightly improved but it'll never be perfect until I uh, make an entirely new improved farm. I decided to check on the farm to see how it was doing. It seems that they're kind of getting stuck on these blocks. Now I'm going to have to be careful if I go in here and, and fix it. But I think changing these to be packed ice might solve the problem. I'll fly back up and check. No, it still seems to have the same problem. I wonder what would happen if they were slabs instead. Oh yeah, that is definitely working much, much better. They're going straight down now. Let's see how the creeper rates are doing. Well, it has filled up nicely, which is a good sign. What the heck? It just blew up. <laughs> Why? Why does this keep happening? 
Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Just stop falling down, please. I hate this farm. I've decided next episode, we're going to build the most powerful creeper farm you have ever seen. Well, maybe not ever, but it's going to be way better than this one. And instead, I'm going to use a new strategy to make way for the world eater. Yes, beds. I'm just going to make loads and loads of beds. I've no idea how well this is going to work, but there's only one way to find out. All right, time to find out if this was a good idea or not. Oh, look at this. This blast protection on the armor. It's very good indeed. All right, well... Don't do that. It's probably going to be parts of it that are annoying, but I think overall this is actually a good strategy. If I add a bit of fire resistance into the mix as well, it makes the whole thing even better. It's probably not as quick as TNT, but I'm just having so much fun blowing things up with beds. I can't believe that's just happened. My helmet has broken. And you can see this armor is like super impossible to get hold of. The only way for me to get armor like that is by downgrading my world again. Which broke way, way, way too many things. I'm, I'm not doing that again. But there is one small chance to possibly fix it. I made some backup ones, okay? I don't have backup boots, but I do have backup of everything else, including the helmet. But it's not got thorns on. Now, can I put thorns on this? Let's buy a thorns book from you. And now, can it be anvil together? It can. Hold on a second. And I can rename it. We have got the ultimate helmet back. That was a very close scare and very stupid of me. But that is the backup gone as well now, so I, I can't ever make that mistake again. So I think it'd be very wise right about now to repair all of my armor. I've got to be much more careful now that that does not happen again. Have you guys ever started a project and realized you've just bit off way, way more than you can chew? I mean, when you look at the amount of area that I have carved out here. It's, it's absolutely massive. But I've still got all of this area to do and all of this on this side, which look how far it goes. It's it's absolutely miles of still got to go. So I've got two choices. I either just keep mining my life away and placing beds and, and blowing stuff up and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it, it, you know, that'd just be the rest of the video pretty much. Or I could create a super insane creeper farm that's going to get me all the TNT that I need. I'm talking like tens of thousands of TNT for this, which will speed the project up so, so much. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This was this was in no way planned. But this creeper farm right here, it's, it's just had its day. It's just too many problems with it. But yeah, this is, this is going to be somewhat crazy. But before I build this project, I'm going to take a quick break and repair all my tools and all my armor because I was pretty much just mining all that netherag for the last six hours. And yeah, I, I need a break. All right, the break's over. Time to get back to work. I've been putting a lot of thought into it, and I think the best way to do this is going to be to use a load of scaffolding. Thankfully, I'm completely overrun with bamboo. All of this is, is definitely going to be enough. I don't know why I made that much. I've gathered up loads of items that are going to be useful, and I've realized that my best option is just to create another farm next to this one, because the only other way to really make a proper gunpowder farm would be to dig an entire perimeter and... Well, we've just not got time for that. So this is where the scaffolding comes in. I'm going to do something like this. It doesn't need to be that high for the first layer. So once I get to the top, I'm going to go something like this with trapdoors on every side of the observer. And a dispenser on top, scaffolding on each one of these trapdoors. And then I can do something like this. And as you can see, it will go to the perfect amount. So it's just it's just so much quicker than, than any other method, really. So you can just kind of place it all and it'll make for you... Okay, hold on. As long as I don't do stupid things like that. But yeah, otherwise it'll make for you a perfect diamond. Then a bucket of water in the dispenser, a scaffolding, and the whole thing repeats again. And now the other thing I also need to make sure I do is cover the entire roof in trapdoors. And because the farm isn't running anywhere near at its max rate, I'm going to allow spiders to spawn for now because they're not really getting in the way of the mob cap. I have to say it is so, so fast building layers with this. I mean, look how many I've done already. Although I have still got to add all the trap doors to the layers as well. And that is trap doors on every single layer now. And I'm going to go ahead and get a load of glass from this chest right here so that it can be used to spider proof the area. I'm just going to test the farm quickly to see if it works. If I go like this, it should, yeah, look at that. It works. Water comes out on every single one, but you can see I'm, <laughs> I was just messing about with the glass and this is, this is not the way to do it. Yeah, this configuration is much better. So far, Operation D Spider seems to be going successful. But now that the sun's going down and it's getting dark, I can properly test this. The glass is on every single level. In theory, now when I AFK up here, only creepers will spawn. Okay, so apparently spiders can still spawn on these corners, which means doing something like this around the area, which again is really quick with the scaffolding. And I think these two as well. And now it is definitely 100% spider proof. I'm also going to fill up this bucket and add one more layer to the top here. Next, I just need a bunch of slabs to cover this area. Let's craft these and get on with the placing. Now, I have made this slab roof a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but I'll be thankful of it later. As you can see, look at that. We've got creepers spawning. It's working fantastically. The next thing on the agenda is to add some redstone. And this is basically just a simple redstone clock with a comparator on subtract mode. And then we've got a lever there. 
Not going to turn it on just yet because we're going to get showered with creepers if I do. First things first, let's build a collection system. This one's been built underwater since I, uh, <laughs> I accidentally ran out of space above it. The area that will hold the water is complete. Let's create the area that the creepers will fall down into. This is looking very good indeed. And so what's the final thing that I need? No, 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 not a seed or to feed. Okay, I'm just going to stop saying words that rhyme with eed now. What I actually need, well, I, I suppose what I require is just a bunch of sponge. I'm always so inefficient when it comes to sponge. <laughs> I shouldn't have had to use that much really, should I? You know what? The main thing is that it has worked. And whilst I do really want to check that the portal works, I feel like I'd just get ambushed by a creeper if I went through and, and that farm has blown up enough today. Now that everything's set up, let's get all of the water in. Now, because I'm just too scared to test it, I've got a much better idea. I'll grab a few eggs and they can be the guinea pigs. It's, it's absolutely foolproof. Well, they're going through the portal to somewhere. And would you look at that? They've gone into the portal. Let's first repair this top bit with some trap doors. I would like to know how so many of the chickens got all the way over here. All that's missing is a few vines around here. And I think I can safely release the creepers. I swear, if any of you blow up, please do not. We're okay. <laughs> We're all right. That's it. Stay calm, guys. I, I, it, is trap doors enough to not blow them up? I think so. I think I'm okay. That's it. Just get rid of them all. So I guess we test out the main thing, see if the rates are improved. But one thing I do know is that this platform needs to be a little bit lower so that the creepers don't despawn when they go into that portal that I built underwater. My little home is complete and um, I've just realised a couple of things. The top layer needs trap doors and the bottom layer needs spawn proofing. So that is all mob spawning on this platform stopped. I'll actually turn on the machine for a second and straight away I've realised I've lost the ability to place repeaters correctly. Takes two. We should have things... Yeah, there we go. They'll all be... Uh, Raining around me, will the creepers? Yep, perfect. And that then gives me the opportunity to add the trap doors. Ooh, careful. <laughs> I was going to say to add the trap doors up here. There we go. All trap doors are actually in this time. And the reason I didn't build that one even higher is because the lower in the world you are, the more mobs will spawn. So the higher it gets, the less you, you kind of get on return. So it makes more sense for me to build a third one somewhere else rather than go really, really high in the sky. I think I've left it enough time. Hopefully there's an increase in creepers. Not many times you say this, but the fact that it's lagging is already a good sign. Yeah, these rates are definitely going to be way, way better. Half a double chest in less than 10 minutes is definitely faster than it was going before. So I'm going to take this opportunity and get even more gunpowder. Plenty more time has passed and plenty more creepers are here. I also feel like it'll be more efficient if I have vines up here as well. And look at that, plenty more gunpowder is here. And you know what? That design was so fast and straightforward to make then I'm gonna build another one right here and then my creeper farm will be even faster and yet another creeper farm is now complete so I'll grab some more eggs and do another chicken test all of these guys should be enough and look at that they have come on through and a spider what are you doing there and whilst I build that farm a lot of creepers did come through which means plenty more gunpowder Oh my goodness, that was a terrifying experience. <laughs> I didn't think I'd connect to that pole. I should have connected to that one. But yeah, let's AFK here for a bit and see just how much gunpowder we now get. Because this farm is spawning a lot of creepers. Plenty of time has passed. Let's see what we've got. A very laggy game, that's what. But we've also got a crazy amount of creepers. And also nearly three double chests worth of gunpowder. That's going to get me lots and lots of TNT. I was just crafting more fire rockets and realised I could have accidentally used all my notch apples for banner patterns. I mean, <laughs> what a waste that would be. And you know what? So that never accidentally happens. Let's uh, put them in the ender chest. The food stocks are getting a little low in this chest, so I'll top it up with pork chops. And now for my next project, which quite simply is going to be to have this area around my house look better because, I, I don't know, it just, it just looks really really boring. First things first, all this snow has got to go. And that is a massive area now dug out. Let's get rid of this ice and then fill in this gap with loads and loads of it. It's times like this that I'm very glad I created the ice farm. And now it's back to placing down the ice. That is now all of the ice filled. Okay, well, it's not quite. <laughs> I'm one block short. Are you kidding me? Now all of the ice is placed down. Let's also terraform this mountain a little bit. While still, of course, leaving this very cool floating snow, I do really like the way that this looks. Makes me feel like I really live by a proper ice lake. I'm also going to get rid of this black like this pathway, like, why is it even here? Perfect. I'm, I'm really, really liking the way this is going. And now to sort out this village, because let's be honest, these guys, they want to attack away from being completely annihilated. And apparently I have a load of villagers ready and waiting to be sent down to the trading hall. I don't know how much progress I'll make on transforming this village today, but at the very least, I can create a much better entrance. First of all, I'd like to know how I've managed to create something symmetrical that does not look symmetrical. I'll just forget about it and keep building. And there is the front of the wall. Now I know what you're thinking. SB, you're the world's worst builder. You should just stick to building farms. And to that I say, don't you worry yourself. This is far from finished just yet. Bruce Logs will make some very nice decorations. And I want to add a layer of snow right here as well to make it more 3D. Just hold on a second. It's actually coming together. And hear me out on this one. What if the walls were a couple of blocks thick and you could actually walk inside them and spy out the area with windows dotted along for you to look through that are like fences. Oh, look. 
look at this. And just when I'm getting going, I've run out of snow. What a terrible time for something like that to happen. And I think all of this snow should be enough to continue building a wall. I have to say, so far, you know, this is, this is a bit of a masterpiece. However, the issues start to creep in when I have to decide whether to get rid of this turtle enclosure or not. And I, I'm thinking, yeah... I want this wall to be longer, like wider, otherwise it won't look right. So congratulations, turtles. You are now going to be protected within the village. And I can also add a pillar right here, just to give the wall that bit of added depth. I think with fences in front with snow underneath, this wall is really starting to come together. But if I want this to reach its true potential, yeah, some of this mountain has just got to go. Now I'm thinking about it, more of this mountain has got to go than I first thought. You know, when I come out of my house and I look at that from a distance, I just think that it looks so, so good. I do think we can get rid of some of this bamboo. I, I, I'd like to keep some of it for old time's sake, but a lot of it is just, it's, it's kind of in the way. This area looks much better now. I don't know whether I should ever fill in this ravine, but I, I kind of like having it. And we can really see the area that the wall's going to go starting to take shape. I think I need to slightly fill in some of the ravine just to be able to fit it. So the wall's going to kind of connect up to the Tower of Slavery. Although, you know what I have noticed? All of the the slaves of, I mean, the, the farm. This is this is a tower. This is a tower of work. This isn't slavery at all. But they've all disappeared. All of the farmers that should be working hard in here. Where did they go? Thankfully, I, I just keep breeding more villagers, so uh, we shouldn't have a problem getting them back. Now let's remove more string and build the other side of the walls. And it's quite handy mining up all these fences because they can then be used to fill in all of the windows and also in these gaps along here. With both sides of the wall done, I think it makes sense to fill in this patch of grass as well, like so. And slabs can be added along all the way on the inside with a roof on top. Let's also fly back to my house, grab some ladders and then place them in areas like this with trap doors above. It makes sense that pretty much every corner would have a way up. And this is an emergency, I can easily get to the top and look. I also want to do the same on this side. And I should probably extend this wall to go around all of the farm. I'll do that right after I've been to bed. Because the ground here is slightly lower than it is over here, I've made it so the wall goes up one. And you know what? I, th I think it works. It definitely works better than I was expecting it to anyway. Once again, I've run out of snow. I need to create some sort of entrance way here. Yeah, th this one's going to be a little bit too low. Making it one higher will definitely look a bit better. Yeah, that's way better. Rather than spend time mining up more snow, I think it'd be a good idea to make this entrance way look a bit better. Let's grab cobblestone and I've got an idea of what I could use this for. Do I actually have a chest for lanterns? I, I don't think I do. It just means I'll have to craft them instead. And here's the plan. Hanging right here, we put a bit of chain and then a lantern like that. I, I think that works. A bit higher up is probably better. And can I actually reach up there? No, I'm, I'm too small. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that for the entranceway. Next, I'll craft some cobblestone walls, which could hang down here. I really don't know if this is going to work. But I'm thinking cobblestone with stairs on each side, followed by iron bars. And right there, if I have that, I'll be able to have blue fire with more stairs around the outside. Okay, this, this, I mean, this is going to look good but it's just going to be too big and it's it's not going to look good so that's more or less what i'm going for as you can see it's it's just not quite right is it just it's the, the entrance way is not big enough for that size so it's back to the drawing board i think something that will work better is if i maybe make some pillars we can still use this and have the stairs on either side now it's annoying me that this bridge is in completely the wrong place it's, it's just got to be moved taking a little bit of a risk and completely open the front just so i can make a pathway what on earth how are you down there <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen to you? Just a random golem trapped in this cave. You look really worse for wear. Let's... Let's get you healed up, good sir. You just never know what you're going to find in a random hole. I just don't know how they do it. You know, you just look at them. The next thing they're in there. Can, can Golub actually swim? I I'm not sure they can. Great. First he was trapped under the ice. Now I'm drowning him. All right, that's it. He's getting the idea. Walk on out, mate. Okay. Into his village. Oh, look at him. He, he won't really see this since I, uh, I changed it up. He's going for a bit of an exploration, isn't he? You do know you, you need to go through this entranceway. Well, I'll leave him to it and just carry on with these. And I'm thinking a nice little water feature here could be nice. If I just put water like that. We'll get some more right there and do it on both sides. Tell you what, guys, I'm actually quite proud of this. I, I, this village is going to look so, so good when it's fully finished. And for the ice bridge, I'm actually going to have a slight change of heart. I'm going to make it one long row of slabs that goes all the way to my house to see how it looks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about this. It almost, because it kind of curves here and then it's just a straight line. Like from here, it, it's okay. But with the curvedness here, it, it just looks a bit weird. But if I instead make the corners a bit square, it, you know what? <laughs> I'm not really sure if I'm happy with this. Maybe if I have a direction going over this way as well. The building was going so well until I tried to make a simple pathway. All right, yeah, yeah. we're not going to keep this, all right? I will make an epic bridge from here to the village, all right? But you know what? I, I just want to ignore this this disaster that I've done with the, trying to rebuild the bridge. Instead, I'll enjoy the village entrance way. I, I think I need to add some sort of fencing so they can't just walk out. You know what? I've got an idea. It's a bit of a risky idea and it, it could work terribly or it could be one of the coolest things I've ever made. But there's only one way to find out. I always wanted to do it so I could flick a lever and fences would come down and seal it with pistons and everything. But 
The problem is, unless I make the wall way higher, I won't be able to fit all the pistons inside of it. Instead, it's going to have to be a much simpler system with walls and sticky pistons. So all of these will be nicely along here with walls on top and repeaters attached to them with redstone behind. The buttons for this are going to be here and here. And they're going to connect to a simple T flip-flop. Look at me getting all technical. Just needs slightly adjusting. And now when I press the button, they extend. Press it again. They go back down. You can do the same on this side. Oh, brilliant. Now I can put the water back in. I'm not a massive fan of the fact that you can see the sticky pistons. But if anybody's got a better way to do something like this, then just let me know in the comments. Like, you know, download my world and rebuild it or something like that. Or, or like, tweet me. The same for this pathway if you've got a good bridge idea or something. Because, you know, this isn't, this isn't the best idea. But that doesn't mean that I don't find it very, very cool indeed. I also do have some spare fence, so we might as well fill in some gaps. I'm also going to change these bits to be like that. And I'm going to have snow under here. I just... Um, <laughs> I blocked up the water temporarily because I did not want water going onto my redstone. That can now all be brought back looking very... Well, looks better anyway. I'll continue changing these to be snow as well. And also add more to the walls. And since there's now a snow wall here, I suppose I can get rid of all these fences and use them for windows. And to make any more progress on this, more snow will definitely be needed. This should be all the snow that I need, hopefully for now. They'll definitely let me continue the walls so that they're further around. And it could be cool to add something in this one, like maybe... A window or something? Yes, a spruce fence window is definitely the answer. I've also just realised that because of the thickness of this wall, yeah, th th these th the homes of these guys are going to be kind of uh, taken over. All right, guys, you, you all need to move over to this side, okay? This is this is not a drill, all right? You will be trapped in the wall for the rest of your life if you don't move. How is there a chicken in here? Of course, there's just one awkward cow left. All right, go on, just get out. No, don't come back in. Yeah, this is where it's... You know what? I, I, I've got a plan B here. No, wait, they're all out. No, they're not all out. <laughs> yeah, I need a better idea. Let's take a bit of wheat. And that's it. Lure them all over here. <laughs> that's right. Of course, the horse has to go. Get out of here, you stupid horse. Right, please let me just block it up now. That's right. Your pen just got a lot smaller. All right, now to do it with the sheep. Nothing's ever straightforward in Minecraft, is it? Oh my goodness, we've... He's found a way out. How on earth have you done this? You go back in there. That's right. You know nothing about this secret escape route. I really don't know how I'm going to tell him that I also have plans to demolish his house. But I guess he'll probably work that one out on his own sooner or later. I have to say, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. We've kind of run into uh, an obstruction there. So until we do some uh, some demolition, we won't be able to continue that way. But, you know, even looking at the, the entrance, like I say, the bridge needs fixing. I mean, even the walls, I think it works. Like the whole idea of pressing that, you walk in and then close it behind you. Like, I think that's a really cool bit of redstone. But let me know what you think. And as the sun sets on this world, that was 2,600 days. And I just crashed. But that was, yeah, that, you, you get the point.